Good evening, my name's Alex Campbell. And my name's Elijah Wood. And you're watching the ninth episode of Discussing Stargate. So now we're doing the 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 the, the one where they go to the planet with the hippy dippy party party people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They all age rapidly. Um, mm. And even, you know, and again, this is this is one of those really early episodes yeah, in the yeah. series. You can tell that it's a really early episode. It's still, still finding its feet. Still finding its feet. Um, the, you know, and you, uh, there are things that are out of place, like the, the sets aren't consistent and the, <laughs> the visuals aren't consistent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which we can go into, that's fine. Though in saying that, they're still introducing, like, um, you know, really cool sci-fi concepts. Yeah, well, it, it's a, a nice, solid, basic sci-fi concept, mm. you know. The, the guy aging rapidly, our main character is aging rapidly. The part of it I do like though is that this community of like Greek hippies <laughs> is like a lab rat experiment mm. from a good world, which is really interesting. Especially when they all start finding out that their lives is just like a small piece. <laughs> it's a sham. It's yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. point of being yeah. a sham. You guys are lab rats. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're an experiment. You're an ant farm. <laughs> Your creator was not a god. And he certainly didn't give you life, he took it away. We are the Chosen. He made this place for us to be happy, to love. To be experimented on! I mean, look at me. I'm 40 years old, or I was. That's thousands and thousands of days. You do not tell the truth. We get, we get of course, uh, the... Um, really cool explanation from Daniel Jackson, which sort of sets the whole thing up once they've um, <clears throat> once they've deciphered the stone and all this crazy shit. Um, that that yeah, you know, he wanted to to see the the trajectory of human evolution or whatever. Yeah, which is very interesting. Mm. I think they should do that in real life to people. <laughs> they should accelerate their aging. Oh, uh, no. well, well, that's Steven, interesting. Where will evolution go? The, the dissecting who channel does not condone uh, <laughs> any uh, express views of Alex Campbell in relation to, to any genetic manipulation. <laughs> From what we've been able to translate so far, he wanted to know how humans evolve. So he shortened the lifespan to about 1 250th of normal. So instead of having to wait a hundred thousand years to see how human physiology evolves, he could do it in a hundred? That is correct. Yeah, yeah, so you know, they, and, and so what episode are we up to now? What number is it? Like eight? Eight? No. You know, now they're talking about nanobots and, mm -hmm. and exper human experiments and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Which, you know, and that's fine. Um, I, I think, though, of course, uh, a lot of other things could have been executed a lot better to, yeah. uh, to, to really bring that home. Yeah, you brought up the sets. The set was a, a kind of a big one. The, the main, like, temple, it's mm. really like a big, massive set with a high mm. ceiling and very wide. But it just looks like plywood. Well, it's a um, it's clearly um, I don't know some room somewhere that's got like square rectangle pillars. Yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah. that they put plywood yeah. on. And well, yeah, what, what culture they meant to be like Greek Roman kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that would be round pillars, but obviously they didn't have the time or the money, so they just. Oh, well, they didn't care. Yeah, <laughs> just the, everything's square. It's a sharp angle, painted plywood. He is the creator, Pelops, the giver of days. This was his home when he lived among us. We keep it as it was then, and we'll do so until he returns. And when will that be? Well, that is a mystery. Until it is revealed, it is the duty of the Chosen to rejoice and wait. You could probably go through the, um, the, the old Stargate episodes and find out which room it's being used for something. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, got, yeah it's got the absolutely. two walls with the, mm, with the mm. hallway that comes out there. Yeah. Right, so it's probably... They would have had five or six that's probably, studios, which they redressed. Every it's probably a room from um, that's been used in the base a lot, mm. right? Because it's got that hallway thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it seems like something like that. Um, yeah, and they've got like the statue <laughs> that they that they you know, and the statue plays a large part, right? It's kind of like the it center does. focus, right? Mm. It's the god, whatever, and the statue looks fucking garbage. Yeah. It's paper mache. Yeah, yeah. I Master mean, of Paris. I don't know what the budget was for this episode or the timeline, so they probably did a good job with what yeah, for resources what they had. They had. Yeah. It's like we just stepped into the citadel at Mycenae. Thought you said it was Greek. Oh, uh, Mycenae was an ancient city in the southern Peloponnesus region. Where's that? Greece. 
you know, and the, the acting is, um, it's, it's kind of tacky. Uh, mm. Yeah, well, more, more the acting from the actual, like, the... The oh, yeah, people. yeah, the, the secondary characters, mm. these ones off. We mentioned in uh, Broken Divide that, um, Richard Dean Anderson, who I'm just going to refer to as RDA from now on in. RDA? Yeah. I don't know if I can remember that. I just, we say Richard Dean Anderson too much. Richard Dean Anderson. I don't have time to do that, just RDA. To do what? Say Richard Dean Anderson. Richard Dean Anderson? It's too much, Steve. It's taking a mental <laughs> toll on me. So RDA, as he's known. We love you, Richard Dean Anderson. <laughs> we mentioned um, in Broken Divide, he did a really good job of acting as like that a hybrid mm. guy. And he does a good job as an old man as well in this episode. Well, he, does, he, he always does a, yeah. a consistently good yeah. job. His posture and mannerisms. Welcome back, kids. It's damn good to see you again. Don't worry. Aside from a little prostate problem we won't go into, it's not so bad. Well, actually, you know, it's funny because they do a gradual change, which she basically gradually gets more and more old man makeup put on. Mm, mm, mm. And his voice gradually changes as yeah, well, yeah, which is does. good. Yeah, so yeah, it's like, it's like a smooth transition. Mm, yeah. Um, and um, the makeup looks really good. Well, that's what I said. It goes from uh, normal Jack to, to Clint Eastwood from Grand Torino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. goes to... Um, the line. He goes to... Oh, uh, what is it? I think it's from Indiana Jones, where one of the oh. people turning really old, and for a second... I love he that looks scene. He drinks the Holy Grail. Like, oh! Yeah, his hair, his hair grows out, yeah. but that's what he looks like. Yeah, yeah, he does, he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Those practical effects are really cool. We need more. We need more gruesome. That was, that was all stop motion. Mm -hmm. He's like holding that chick in his foot. <laughs> Episode. And I think this is just a me specific thing. This isn't to uh, discredit the show or say anything wrong with the show. But um, I know what old man Richard Dean Anderson looks like now. <laughs> we have old man RDA yeah. now. And he doesn't look like that. No. And um, of course, that's that's no discredit to the show. They did their best <laughs> and it looks good. But I was thinking, that's not what old man Richard Dean Anderson looks He's like. He's not fat enough. Yeah, he doesn't have the mustache. <laughs> his face is melting off his fucking bones. <laughs> Um, that was just something in the back of my mind. Though. Well, we, um, we talked about that. We did talk about that while watching it. The inconsistency with old man makeup throughout, like, television shows. Similar, yeah. You know, and we talked about, like, examples like Prometheus, which uh, we think probably just comes down to the lighting. I think post so. Post-production yeah, colour grading. Yeah, colour grading, because that's a multi, multi-million <laughs> dollar movie. And this 20-year-old um, television show, the old man makeup looks better than the multi-million dollar modern day film. But really, we're spending uh, 120 million dollars on the project. No, well, I just don't care. I just don't want it. No, no. Just do whatever. You've got, you've got 10 hours. Do it. Get it done, mate. <laughs> The lighting was too harsh and it was on his yeah. face or something and they asked Ridley and Ridley was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where am I? I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Are you my daughter? Is this my home? Ridley, if you're a maiden. <laughs> yeah, Ridley. You need to come over here, mate. Just sit in the chair. This is like the studio execs pushing him around. <laughs> Directed by Ridley Scott. <laughs> He's actually dead, and then like, and they've just got these hands hand on it, and like, yes, la 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 la. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good decision. Yeah, just so they can put on the trailer. Directed by Ridley Scott. So it's clearly a corpse. No, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, poor Ridley. What poor Ridley. <laughs> oh, that's that's really funny. <laughs> you just, you need to stop, mate. It's yeah. time, it's over. <laughs> we stop pissing on the Alien franchise. And, and like everything. Yeah, yeah, we'll remember you man. Blade Runner, Alien, Gladiator, it was all gold. Now stop. Just stop tarnishing your fucking reputation, Just man. stop! It's already dead! 
<laughs> I think the bar is lower mm -hmm. because there are way too many films being made. And therefore, I think there's a lot of directors who uh, maybe there's too many. It's forcing the standard. It's yes. raising the bar. Yes. Which is good. But, but you just said the bar had been lowered. I, I did, but you can make a, a feature film about a pen, depending on what your vision is. That, that's, it's just that simple. So any story is a good story. They say, what's your plan? There is no plan. I, or like that, I'm going to make a film about blue pens. With a film, you know pretty well almost immediately whether you're going to stay or not. And I was right there through this. Who's the director? Yeah, you know, and then it's funny, uh, we, we talked about how, so they'll sit down and, and like, eats the cake or whatever. Oh, the cake. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, well, we'll say the, the dialogue is funny at the beginning because they, they say things that should be normal observations. Yeah. But they're observations for the sake of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like... Um, uh, Set up payoff for the audience. There's no one here over 40. And it's like, okay, well, you know, you never make that observation anywhere else kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or, or it's, it's so directly related to the story. So what's going to happen later You know, on. and then it's like, um, oh, and what does Jack say? Uh, eat an apple? Well, it, it, fine. the way I perceived it is like a, a Garden of Eden, like Ooh. Snow White reference. Yeah. He's like, Jackson's like, everything's perfect, it's paradise. And he's like, well, you wouldn't eat an apple here, would you? Um, the things feel a little off here. Are you crazy? It's a paradise. Yeah, sure, have an apple. What could happen? And then seconds later, he eats a cake. Yeah. Eat this cake, it's for nobody else. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff, 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 cake. <laughs> yeah, sure, have an apple. What could happen? I am Kimbia. Welcome to our village. Thank you. Jacqueline. You just said! <laughs> Please, mate. Well, again, and, and this, this again is uh, a few things from the previous episodes as well. I mean, uh, and he does, they do directly say, um, uh, from now on, we stick to rations. Yeah, as, yeah. as Jack's mm -hmm. going to sleep or whatever. Yeah, so they're still learning. Yeah, so they're still learning. So I don't, don't eat cake. They, they, I don't don't think, eat poison apple. I don't think they do stuff like that later down the track. Basically, no, I you don't ever really. They get down. stricter and stricter. Yeah, right. Well, the more have... disasters they run into. <laughs> well, they're lucky they didn't die, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple, multiple. That, that could happen. <laughs> so yeah, so that's fine. Um, you know, that, that's just setting up procedure for later down the track. Mm. Which again, you know, with the early seasons, yeah, they'll deal with all that. Because again, finding their footing and then you won't have to deal with it ever again. Yeah, mm. yeah. so yeah, that's fine. This place must be loaded with artifacts. Well, that statue in there, for example, must be the Messinian hero Pelops. <laughs> who fought in this winged chariot, hurling lightning bolts. Uh, it's funny, the, uh, the, the, the analyzing the statue and then... Um, they're looking at the thing and it's like, okay, oh, it's a combination lock. And then he presses like the combination of three symbols. Yeah, yeah, just like straight up. Yeah, there's think. no point. Yeah, well, there's no like puzzle or anything where they try to figure it out. It's like, this is a combination code. And then like first go, Tilt just punches it in. There's like three symbols. <laughs> I don't know like if it's a, a, a three code thing or a five code thing. There's a lot of combinations for that. <laughs> Until it's just like good goos. Well, nah. actually, no, I think there's only like 24 combinations with three symbols. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. It depends if there is like three, three like numbers in the code, or if there's five, because I think he presses five maybe, and maybe it was just the last three. Okay. But I think if there's five, there's a lot more. Yeah, but yeah, but just kind of just like, mm, that's a bit weird. I mean, it can happen, it's possible. <laughs> it is possible, yeah. We found pictographics like this in ancient Greece and ancient Cretan, but we, we never completely deciphered this form. The symbols are a sequence. What, like, uh, combination? What is a combination? Well, it's a, a sequence of symbols or motions. Um, but then they, like, they pull out the tablet, and this is uh, uh, a nice little Google technology thing. Yeah. And it looks great. Like mm. the, the Very aesthetic. Stone tablet. Pleasing. And that will come through. You'll see that again and mm. again and again, which mm. is really nice. And the CGI on it holds up 20 years later. Mm. Yeah, no, it looks good. Can you read this? I believe I can. It seems to be some sort of record. So, I've watched a few... Stargate things on YouTube and uh, 
a lot of people are complaining about Jack O'Neill being quippy and stuff. But I like what? Yeah, yeah. A, a few reviews and like, well, not really reviews, but like an overall series like analysis thing. Mm. Like the quippiness takes away from the seriousness. And here's my first point of contention. I know a few SG1 fans will hear this as blasphemy, but O'Neill got really annoying sometimes. On the whole, he's a good character, but he suffered from what I call the Jack Sparrow effect. O'Neill's shtick is sarcasm. No matter the situation, he always has a cheeky quip for the audience, which is fine for the most part, but as the seasons went on, it seems as if the superficial trait of the character became emphasized more and more. Which I don't feel whatsoever, but I have a mass amount of nostalgia for that character. Um. I'm trying to think about it. I mean, yeah, I, I can. I maybe, can... maybe there are serious moments later on, like the serious finales, where. Oh yeah, well, it definitely gets uh, when when they find their footing. It definitely gets mm. more like um more concentrated and, and focused and serious. Mm. Um, though in saying that, yeah, I, I can kind of see that that argument. Yeah. But but and so this is one of the defining things about Stargate for me, besides say like um. I don't know, Star Trek, I guess. Yeah. Right, is that even though Star Trek tries to play it like super serious, it is yeah. very silly and tacky. Mm -hmm. And so is and so is a lot of the stuff in Stargate. Yeah. Like Stargate in of itself is that 90s like silly um mm. sci-fi sort of thing. Yeah. But you've got all these other elements that that you know they're playing it straight and and just kind of like uh, having a few things to kind of break that down. Yeah. Right? You know, acknowledge kind of like the, the sort of silliness, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you'll have like um, Carter and she'll say techno babble, and it's clearly techno babble. It's well de well delivered though. Yeah. Right? And, then, and then you'll have Jack and you'll go, <laughs> What? What's going on, Carter? Yeah. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Well, so that was a bit, that was a bit overdone. Yeah, there was a moment where it happened like three times. <laughs> yeah. Your blood sample showed way more organisms compared to the Argosians. How many more? Maybe on the level of a hundred times more. And they are multiplying. Which means? It means the organism, or whatever it is, seems to be compensating for your natural age. You've already lived way longer than anyone with this, for lack of a better word, disease ever should. Cut to it, Captain. At the rate you're changing, by the end of two weeks, you'll be the equivalent of 100 years old. We're aging at a rapid rate. What? What? Break it down, Carter. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. Yeah. Colonel, you're going to die. <laughs> Can you Don't... speak English, please? <laughs> yeah. I uh, know. <laughs> but yeah, the reason I bring up the quippiness is um, I love it. And in this episode, it becomes old man. And mm. that quippiness becomes like angry and bitter. <laughs> angry and bitter. And yeah. there are uh, three or four scenes where like he's just angry and vile at the situation he's fallen into with aging rapidly. Some people live. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, 100 years! Yeah, and he's just like, has no regard for this culture, he's just like saying... Someone else doesn't love you! <laughs> yeah, the acting was beautiful, and he's just like shouting down these people, and like, <laughs> spitting venom at their culture. Everything you know and think is wrong! It's wrong! <laughs> You're lab rats! For crying out loud! <laughs> oh, Pilaf doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! His kind kidnap people like you and take them to other worlds to be used as slaves. No, Phillips thinks of us as his slaves. It was all great. Well, the sort of sarc sarcastic quippiness thing is, is kind of like an old man sort of thing as well. Yeah. Right? It's just, you know, throughout the thing, he sees, he's a grizzled, like, war veteran special ops dude. Mm. Right? Who's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and he's the sarcastic man. and, you know, whatever. Mm. Right? And he makes all the quips and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. For crying out loud! Uh, to say that, you know, like the quippiness itself, I think would be symptomatic and there would be other things mm. that also detract, other little things that detract from the seriousness of the show. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not a totally serious show. No, 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 it's not Star Trek. You know, and so, and, and, and you would, I think that, that if you took that away, you would still be left with other things mm. that would be just as bad. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And it's like it's not like he doesn't quip in like the episode where he's watching his friends die in a special ops. Yeah, that's thing, true. like over and over yeah, and over yeah. again. And the quippiness in this is really dark and twisted and spiteful and like mm. talking down to these people. So yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, though, I, I, again, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. and and it could that's also possible. be it could also be modern sensibilities as well as seeing something a lot 
dark or gritty or serious. Yeah, looking through like the 2018 lens of this 20 year old show, I like to take shit as it comes, you know. When I review a 50 year old episode of Doc 2, I don't go, this special effects don't really work, do they? But in saying that, we've grown up with these sort of shows, right? Yeah, and, so, and so we, we have a, 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 a separate appreciation for them. Mm-hmm. And so can you imagine somebody that's, uh, I guess, watching like the modern Star Trek bloody thing, Star Trek Discovery, which yeah, is yeah, like yeah. all, all dull and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right? And then going back and watching one of those things. And it's really, um, <clears throat> it's really a, um, uh, an acquired taste. If, yeah. if you've never watched any of these sci-fi mm. shows or any of that sort of stuff, yeah. it's an acquired taste. Yeah. You'll either get it or you won't. Well, I have heard that a lot in general with my generation and the younger generation. Just like old movies in general. Some people just don't do it, eh? Mm. I'm like, oh, do you see that blah blah Like, that movie's old. Okay. It, it's good. It's beautiful. Like, it's, yeah, a, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a beautifully shot, edited, acted, executed Yeah, but movie. the special effects weren't as good as they were 40 years ago. O- okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm walking away now, <laughs> and you can stay there. Also, but, but I will say that, and I've said this before, is that, um, you know, I, even I was like that, right? So I still liked Stargate and everything, because mm. I grew up with it. Yeah. It took me years to come to come along to actually appreciating older movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even so, and even then, I, I grew up with things like Total Recall and Starship Troopers and, mm. and Alien and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, other than going even later back, it was a bit of a, yeah. I don't know, I was just kind of like delving through your video easy as a kid, like watching all that old shit. Mm. I remember going to school and being like, Indiana Jones, and people were like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> What's wrong with you? We're watching Dragon Ball Z, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, yes, I watched Indiana Jones and stuff as yeah. well, and the old uh, Star, uh, Star, Star Wars uh, original movies. And, oh, yeah. They but then I also watched like Dragon Ball Z and the prequels and all that sort of stuff, so... Mm, it yeah. is what it is. Again, a quiet taste. You know, yeah, so it's, it's, same thing with music. Some people are just like modern day pop, you know, that's their fucking If music. you're watching this review right now and you're following along, then you'll find out. Worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You enjoy good media. I don't imagine like, on you. I don't know, imagine that one of those people like stumbled on this review. <laughs> like, oh man, I'm not sure about stuff, eh? Yeah, oh. I'll watch this 20 minute review. And then they go and watch the, the episode that this review talks about. And yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> that would be a turn off. <laughs> so yeah, no, fuck those people. For crying out loud! In conclusion though, this was a solid basic episode, you know? Reasonable sci-fi premise. Really the only standout thing is just RDA's performance. And it's not like Daniel Day-Lewis or anything. Well, it's focused on him, right? It's his... It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's his little character piece. It's kind of uh, the everything else is a vehicle just for him, I guess. Yeah, you think it was just his idea? He's like, we need an episode where I can put on old makeup <laughs> and act. <laughs> and act, yeah, well, you yeah. know. Write a premise around right. it. Do it now! He is executive producer. That's true. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, honestly. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, alright. Right. Yeah. Thank you for watching. We love that. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Don't do those things. Like my Instagrams. Please dislike this video <laughs> to show us how much you hate subscribe us. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go and uh, go through his back catalogue and dislike all the other videos. So. <laughs> Cut out clips of me saying horrible shit and make a compilation and post it at Facebook and destroy my career. Maybe he'll do a better job next time. <laughs> Maybe you'll learn, boy. I will never learn. <laughs> I will learn from any mistakes. That's, that's a good part of my, my life is in chaos. <laughs> my life is a uh, uh, continuing existential crisis. <laughs> Stagnating horror. <laughs> <laughs> For crying out loud! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! For crying out loud! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! Oh, peel off doesn't give a rat's ass about things like love! For crying out loud! <laughs>